Kirikoto. Um, you know, if you, if you don't have one bag, sure, you can have the other, it's okay. Um, awesome to talk to you, especially you guys out there in, in um, Etherland. Um, it's um, really amazing how Simon's managed to, I don't know how he does it, the streaming stuff. Um, I'd like to learn sometime. Because I think, um, to me, it's about, um, it's about the Waiata we sung. You know, if we don't stand together, we'll get nowhere. But I've got um, one to Afi, um, Rochelle, and, and, and Rob, because um, I think um, it is about our future. I hate that word. But if you look at th this one, you know, we are leaders in the world in New Zealand. Aren't we wonderful? We lead in yachting and rugby, in teens, in youth suicide, in youth pregnancy rates. Um, we lead in, um, I'm not sure about depression, but we're pretty up there. Um, we lead pretty high up there in, yeah, we do, um, in child homicide. We kill our children. So, Internationally, I'm, I was just, I was preparing this tour, I was getting quite depressed, to be quite honest, um, because there's so many influences that are pushing our young people down. There's the international ones. Um, you might recognize this guy, um, and you might recognize this woman. I see them as the parents of neoliberal ideology. And for me, that's the root cause of what we are suffering right now. Um, We've got the latest iteration. Um, and if we don't change this ideology, we, I reckon the world is not going to do so well. Um, what it brings is the poverty gap. We're all experiencing that. What it results in is global warming. We're all experiencing that. What it results in is post-truth. There's no benchmarks anymore. There are no ways of telling this is right and this is wrong. We post justice. There's no justice system. There's only one for the rich. We have ethnic prejudice and hatred. We're the most divided in, in Europe, in the UK, um, all over the world. What can we do? I'm going to add misogyny. According to one um, person I listened to recently, Worldwide, there are three jumbo jet planes of people landing every, crashing every day of women being mistreated. Every day. That's worldwide. Um, so we've got these spectrums of identity. We've got these spectrums of gender. Who am I? Now, for young people, that's the normal question to answer. I don't think many people are, are, able, are able to answer that easily now. Who are we? I think we're all a bit lost, never mind young people. Um, I think also one of the problems is people are now being treated as resources. We're bits of machinery that have to work like mad for other people. And we're treated like bits of machinery. We're not treated as if we're human beings. We're told to do this, that, and the other, and you're lucky if you get paid for it. And, oh, gosh, you want extra hours? No way. Can't afford those. Colonization has happened all over the world, down the hits down the centuries, but now I think it's becoming more apparent as what the results of that are. We've got social media pressures, so what happens is that everything has to be done yesterday, it's got to be done right now. Don't get me wrong, there's some really good uses of social media, um, but there's also heaps of pressure resulting from it. Some people call Facebook face wipe because it's where you put what you'd like to be rather than who you really are. There's Dr. Google, and we all know that Dr. Google has some great ideas and some great um, suggestions and some really crap ones. Um, I have to fight Go Dr. Google every day just about, because it's not based on science. There's some great bits to it, don't get me wrong, but are we developing the critical thinking? Are we developing the ways of saying, yep, that sounds right, and oh, crap. Um, there's so much trauma in the world. And it, I think I've got this theory that people came from the world wars from all, all around the world. Um, first one, we didn't even recognize that that caused trauma. We called it shell shock. 
then we started to realize, ah, this is post-traumatic stress disease disorder. More and more after each war, and all those people went home and did their best to parent their kids. Now, I don't know about you, but being parented by somebody whose mood's going up and down, who can't cope with life, who gets irritable at the drop of a hat, which are all the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, that's not a very easy experience. So you develop post-traumatic stress disorder. And we go from two or three families to millions. Are there any treatments for that? I haven't seen any because it's not counted as an illness. We treat mental illness, mm, we try, but we have no treatments for trauma because the talking therapies are the way we treat trauma, right, Carl? And our system isn't geared for that. It's just not geared for it. So the results are all those different things. So what can we do? How do we respond? Procrastinate now and panic later? I reckon it's time to panic, guys. We've got to do some panicking now. We've got to act. So I have this thing about taxes. People always complain to me about taxes. There's nothing certain in life other than tax and change and death. Well, in the olden days, people were the lords and the serfs. Yeah, we've got pretty similar now. We call, um, I won't go into that. I've, I've been on for ages. Um, but we've got, you know, we, the, the lords used to bring in taxes, if you like, on their serfs. And then it was all for themselves to fight their wars and all that, decorate their castles. Um, and somehow that hasn't changed. But actually, somewhere along the line, we decided as people, civilized people, that it was no longer good enough to actually just keep it for ourselves the strong ones. And that actually in a civilized community, we need to take care of everybody, even those who can't do it for themselves. And how do we do that? Well, we share the resources. And it's collected by people that we elect, if it's a democracy. And then it's supposed to be spread out so that we can all benefit. Now, there's a lot of, I've talked to an intermediate class of kids recently. Um, and they said, one of the kids said, it was about what I'm going to do when I grow up. Um, and one of them said, oh, I'm going to be, um, um, I'm going to be an accountant. And I'm going to make sure nobody pays taxes. I said, okay, you know what that means? That means that your children probably won't have a school to go to. That means that your children probably won't be able to get help for their coughs and their colds and their measles and their whooping coughs. Oh, he said, why not? Well, I said, taxes pay for all that. Do they? Yes. So for me, if we want housing, vital ingredient for health. If we want education, if we want health care, if we want security, we need taxes. So I'm going to end up with some suggestions. We have elections coming up. We don't seem to have any parties that want to um, talk about this stuff. But what we really need to me I'd love some of you the figures as to what, whether making free access to primary care actually saves money, because I've got a feeling it would. I would like somebody to say universal super -an from 70 so we can give use, universal super -an to children under, under five. I'd like to say that we have a community services card that means something, that actually means Okay, it's means tested and you have to fill in 40 pages of crap, but at the same time, it means you can get free access to transport, free access to healthcare, free access to education, because education ain't free anymore. I'd like to say we have a living wage so that people are paid what they need to survive. Not, well, not just survive, to actually live properly. I'd like to say we have contracted hours and no more casual labor so that as certainty, in the number of hours you can work for and your wage and income. I'd like to say that we pay for these taxes, by pay for all this by taxes and by a decrease in CEO's pay so that wages get increased. Thank you.